Hi, my name is Rick Howell. I'm a TV guy, and this show is called Talk Back to Television. It's about the business of television, how we make the programs, how we distribute the programs, and mostly how we pay for the programs. Because if we can't pay for the shows, there's nothing to watch. Stay tuned. Good morning. This is Talk Back to Television, and I'm thrilled to be here with Allison Dollar. Allison, how are you? Well, so great to see you. Happy New Year. It's like we haven't seen each other. It, it's, it, it's been a while. Last time we saw each other, it was probably a Tracy show, and I'm going to guess you're going to be out there again in March, right? I will indeed. I will. It's my favorite uh, conference in our space. You know what? It's interesting. It's the one place where you can go and get to the people you want to meet without uh, a personal assistant or a calendar or a schedule or any of the rest of it. You get five minutes that it would take you normally a year to get. And no, so true. And also, everybody is very knowledgeable. You know, all of us have been in it, and you, all of us, for decades. Yep. So it's nice to uh, have the shorthand and not some of those sessions and some of the other ones. I shall not name names. I cannot sit in because, you know, they're they're too superficial. So yeah. Yeah. All right. So a good job. You, you are chairman and founder of the Interactive TV Alliance. What exactly is the Interactive TV Alliance? I am. I am. Well, it's a 501c6. We um, actually launched on 9-11 itself at another TV conference here in LA. That on that day, everybody showed up. We were so shocked. But there was an unnet need to get out of the silos between all the vertical segments within the marketplace. And so that was so the impetus was actually to do that. And um, since then, you know, it's had a storied evolution. We did, uh, we had a retreat, Reinventing Television Summit, all sorts of things, did an interactive uh, advertising guidelines, a lot of amicus brief to the digital transition, if you can believe it, because it hadn't happened yet. And then we kind of worked ourselves out of a job that way. Our memberships weren't professionals like uh, TV Academy or that was the actual corporation. So we had Disney and Kraft Foods and Intel and Microsoft and all these disparate players who typically weren't in the same room, not much less the same board or talking to each other. But then, you know, the marketplace took over and we sort of, that issue went away. Now everybody understands that the peanut butter and chocolate need to mix. Uh, so then I'm just using it to do programming for other shows like CES and NEB and all that sort of stuff. And then I continue, I know, I know uh, many of us do, you know, or brought in as a fractional yep. uh, work or doing consulting and stuff like that. And, and currently I'm mostly working with AR wall there, the virtual production software. And um, that's like really, of course, taking off because it's so many benefits to be oh, yeah. using a virtual set. And um, yeah, they're doing great. All right. So now one of the first times we met was at a conference that you were running uh, in a previous incarnation uh, on the Queen something, Queen Elizabeth. That Queen was an Mary. ITA. That, that was an ITV Alliance retreat. That was our Reinventing Television Summit. All right. And and I have yeah. to tell you, one of, the, one of the tasks for the groups was to invent something. And, and our, in, our group invented something that was very possibly prescient because we talked about taking the heads of the Beatles, recorded footage of yes, the Beatles, and putting them on fresh video of players of those respective instruments. Rick, I re remember that. That's pretty and wild. It, was, isn't it? it yeah. was pretty wild, and now here we are, right? And, now and, here and, we are. I this I is, invented this is, deep fakes. You invented deep fakes, and I think that is a direct, you know, to use that colloquialism, I do think deep fakes is a direct result of the chocolate and peanut butter finally mixing, for better or for worse, you know, this is where we are. So when you have, you know, Walmart talking about AI and doing that deal with Unity and all the stuff that's happening, this is where we are. So, um, Rick, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> I, I, you know what, I, I, I basically I'm doing what I always did, which is I talk for a living. Okay, now. Yes, I. Yeah, you're great at that. That's and for sure. and 
occasionally people listen. Allison, the real question on the table, as much as this business was changing slowly over the last few decades, that change has accelerated dramatically. Uh, yes. We're recording this on a Friday, and as near as I can figure, uh, that means that at least 16 new Fast Channels launched today. Yeah. Um, and not a one of them is making money, nor will any of them ever make money, which is strange yeah. to, to think of. Well, um, you know, this is not the first time that they get the cart before the horse in terms of the business model. And then they rush around and everybody's trying to make their quarterly earnings and they do these deals. I thought it was very interesting that uh, Stir sold off, was sold off to Thinking Media. And we're going to see a lot of that coming up. You know, Zone TV was bought out by BCI, I guess it was, right, that took them on. So, you know, those two things that those those tracks seem that they're not related, but they are interrelated. The the workflow issues, all those new players that are the people don't know about that are like helping Amagi. I know one of them uh, and, and the like, you know, in that sort of middle workflow world, that's there's going to be a lot of activity there. And then you're looking at, again, if you think about Walmart and Unity, as I said, those two things, the infrastructure AR wall that's all switched over and it's, and it's done. And in fact, um, the third quarter piece of that would be what happened with mobile that added this extra infrastructure, this other habituation um, on the consumer experience side. And Airwall has a, an app version that basically the influencers and the prosumer levels can use the integration software that they have, live action on an LED wall with the actors sync it with the phone so this is all part and parcel of the same thing so you know you've been prescient you i love that beatles thing i think they we will we will be seeing that right <laughs> we will be seeing that we may have we'll be seeing the beatles seen running around on seen it and not known it i did, didn't george yeah. lucas do a thing and he picked up john and put john's head on a player and yes. put it with the other guys. Yes, yes. And we'll see them, I was going to say, running around in Roblox with uh, Paris Hilton. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Now, listen. Now, listen. I don't yeah. I, I, I don't want to go too far without, without asking this question. As we are speaking, uh, Byron Allen is trying to do a deal to pick up Paramount. Okay? Yeah. Now, I, I, I will confess to my viewers that I am a Paramount Viacom alumnus and a shareholder. Um, but nonetheless, you know, something's got to happen. Something's got to fall. Um, yeah. Can, can Byron Allen make that work? Who heard by, his let, me, let me say, can he make it work by himself? I, I do not think so. Okay. What would he need to think... make it work? He's listening. It, okay, Byron, he's... you need to what? <laughs> Well, Byron, you know, you need to have probably some of not your usual bean counters around you, for one thing, okay. right? Okay. Uh, and also some of the other advisors on building these models that can turn on a dime. This is the thing, these hybrid, I, I remember having this conversation actually with you probably 20 years ago about the need for hybrid business models. Because what they always want is a spreadsheet that just goes straight across. It's the same across. It's not. It has to be organic to be able to shift in real time to the consumer consumption behavior and pattern. And then the content, you know, has to be truly a juking organic thing where you're pulling from here, you're using that, you wrap with a banner here, you do a click to buy there with a third party brand, all these alliances. So it has to have to have some imagination, ingenuity, and speed and uh, not be the usual you know suspects all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna put that into into my terms which is rather than focusing on what you got and what you can push you need to focus on the consumer and what she wants yes if you want something you don't have then who can go get it Exactly. Well, this is what we always said about the ITA and the definition of ITV. It's the umbrella of products and services that have used the back channel, but it's in the landscape that we are the locus of control 
rather than you know big three broadcasters push one to many shifted to the consumer and that happened a long time ago with mobile and the rest of the infrastructure players legacy players in television didn't pay attention it's a consumer is in control. You have to have to not follow the consumer either. You have to anticipate yeah. where they will be and be serving it up. I was interested to see about the QR codes for the Super Bowl. We'll see how that works. Some of these things, you know, there I, I really applaud those bigger um corporate organizations, the some of them that are, are publicly traded, they're actually being a little bit um entrepreneurial it's yeah. really wonderful to see that some of them are you know stepping up they're going out there on the edge and you know the interesting thing and i've always said this about and we've got to finish this thing up but we always said about folks like comcast at the end of the day they may be losing a ton of subscribers but the traditional television business and now broadband is paying the mortgage and that Absolutely. allows and, them and to Comcast go out there. And Comcast was always so, so out in front for among all of those people in the MSO world. Well, they have the um, ability to be, now to go out and flex yeah. and do the other things. And I think eventually we're going to see that they're actually going to be the aggregator of record for all streaming services. I totally agree with you, Rick. And the thing is, too, is uh, since we do, you know, have our community, just remember which of those guys were there for so long that they were understood and they were creative and, and they were smart in that way and uh, willing to experiment and do new things. I mean, even back in the middleware days, things were happening there, you know, the industry moved on, but those guys understood. And so there's only a handful where I would say, yeah, they we used to always say that, right? Do they get it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, now it's the consumer's at the at the wheel and you know god help us on the deep fake side but on the on the upside of that is that means there's actually truly new revenue streams coming which we have not even anticipated and that that part's going to be very fun all right well talking about fun we're looking forward to the tv of tomorrow's show in san francisco at the end we of march indeed. and T T tracy is doing a, a, a margarita festival i'm not quite sure what but i i have agreed to be a judge so I'll, oh. I'll I'll be I'll be sampling the margaritas. Um, well, I will be right there next to you sampling the margaritas. Go. We can all you know have a white nice toast, and also by the way, you're always dressed for it. Yeah. Well, so. I try to be. All right, listen, <laughs> we're gonna sign off. Uh, Allison Dollar, thank you very much, and we'll see everybody Thanks next week. Thanks a lot. Week. We'll see you soon. See have you a next good week weekend. on Talk Back to Television. Bye bye. Talk Back to Television. It's awesome. Let's talk about sports. Seriously. We're combining your fandom with our insights. Let's break it down a little bit and put this into context. With us, you'll find top athletes share their stories in a way you've never heard before. You saw Michael Jordan folding up his uniform. It's two rotations in the air before you land. If you don't get all that, it could kind of go wrong really bad. So. And I let out the biggest fist pump because I knew we were good. His kneecap wasn't on his.